Hi everyone, this video is a quick follow-up to the previous video, which was about task databases, or what I call the action item databases, the database of the individual actions and tasks you need to do each day to move towards your bigger objectives. And this whole series is diving into individual components of a comprehensive integrated Notion life operating system. So last week I did an overview of the whole system. Today we're going to talk about dependent tasks, which is one of the great things about Notion very few dedicated specialized task management apps have the ability to have dependent tasks, which are tasks that sequence behind other tasks. So in my system, as I showed yesterday, I have a due date, a DO date, the date on which I intend to do each item in the action items database or each task. The only exception is that dependent tasks don't have due dates because dependent tasks follow in sequence another task that does have a due date. So you can have one dependent task or you can have a whole string of them. You can have a dependent task behind an assigned due date task, then a dependent task behind that dependent task, and then a dependent task behind each of those dependent tasks, and you create a whole string of them. Alternately, you could have two dependent on one, but that usually doesn't make sense because you can only do one thing at a time. So you might as well just have them all sequential, one, then one, then one and then you have a string of them. So as the first one gets done, it gets checked off, the dependent task moves up with a due date and is the head of the chain until you get to the end of the chain and you have them all done. So let's dive into the system and see how it works. Okay, so when you look at the system here, we are in the database. This is not a dashboard and this is not typically where I interact with it. I interact with this in my daily action zone dashboard, which is something we're going to look at in a few videos from now. But for now, let's just look at the database to see how it's set up. This is the action items database I showed you last time. The only difference is this view is filtered in addition by due date. So these are just the tasks today. And again, as I showed you last time, they're nicely sorted, organized, and very manageable. So I'm now going to switch over to the dependent tasks view, which is a view filtered to only show items that have the following field not empty, which means they're following something. There's something in the following field. So what is the following field? These are items that are all following another task or another action item in this database. And by following, that means they're dependent. They're dependent upon another action item or task. That is what makes this the dependent tasks database view. So what does that actually mean? So let's look at the first one. Uh, we have an item task here called program course video slides. It basically makes some slides. Now, if you look behind it, there's the following and a next in line field. What this means is this particular action item is following this other action item. And then after this action item, in this row in this view, we have the next in line. Now, the next in line happens to be the next row. So preps slash setup. VMix is the next in line, which is the one behind it. Now this one behind it is following a task, which is the one we just looked at above it. And the, it has a next in line behind it, which is the next row here. Now this next row, record first program segments, is following a task, so it's dependent upon that other task, which is the row right above it. Now this one does not have a next in line, so that's the end of the chain. So that's how it works. You have a sequence of events. Now the, the, one it's, the first one it's following is not in this view because that one's not following anything. If we click on the one that the first in the chain is following and open that up, actually just, just in this view here alone, we see that one is assigned a DO date, a due date, the date at which it's going to be done, and a priority. So that one's already scheduled in the system. So come March 24th, I'm either going to do that action or I'm going to reschedule it to another date. If I do it, at the same time I check this off, so I open this one up, I open up the task. I'm going to check it as done, and then I go to the next in line. The fact that there's a little plus in front of it means that this has a task behind it, that there is a next in line. So it's just a, an extra reminder, though most of my views are designed to show the next in line field so I can see if there's a dependent task on any given task. So that when I check it off as done, I go to that next in line, open that up, and I assign it a due date, and I would assign it a priority. If it's coming up in the next day or two, the priority is gonna mean a lot more. 
if the due date's a week or two away. It's just sort of a holding position to give me a sense when I get, when my future self gets to this, I can see what my former self thought it was in terms of importance. And it's just a little cue from my past self to my future self. So I'm going to show you how to set this up, but first I'm showing you how it works. So when we set it up, you'll see what we're trying to achieve. So if you look at the next one, this sequence ended here. So that means that was the end of the chain. You can see we have a longer chain here that ends with no next in line here, and then a short chain at the bottom that ends with no next in line. So again, this item here, now this first one, the first one in every case is not in this view because this view is only items that are following something, only items that are dependent. This is following another item, so this item's dependent, but the one it's following is not dependent on anything. So that one, if we open it up, we'll see it has a due date and it has a priority set. So when I come to that, I'll either do it or I'll reschedule it down the road. If I do it, then I'll check it off as done and I'll come to this item that's in this view here and I will assign it a due date and a priority. And then that will be the first in the chain. Again, just like the previous chain, this one shows the action item prior to it and the one after it. The one after it is on the next row here. And then this one on the next row shows you what it's following, the previous row, and what's after it, which is the next row. And it just goes through this whole chain until it gets to the end of the chain. The problem with having everything have a due date, a DO date, and not setting up these chains is if the first one gets bumped and rescheduled, then you got a problem because you have to go and reschedule all of them. And it's hard to keep track of what's dependent on what if they all are just independent floating objects without any connection to each other. So this way, you know they're a chain, you know the sequence, and you only have to change the due date of the first in the chain and the rest just automatically roll back with it. It's just a great way to do it. And again, you cannot do this in Todoist or most to-do apps. Only the more complex project management apps for large organizations, enterprises, have this kind of functionality. So I was super excited to see that Notion could deliver this functionality. This is yet another reason why I think Notion is hands down the best task management app for individuals and small teams. How do you set this up? It's not immediately obvious. So this is how it works once it's in place. Let's go to our master tables filtered for today. And today I've got three items in here. I've got three videos I'm recording. This one now is, is one of those three videos. This is the one instance where I have three tasks or three action items with the same priority rating. And the reason is that they're batched together. So I'm doing the, all three together at the same time. One sort of sit down for all three of them. But let's say that we, I was not doing all three of these on the same day. These are sequential. There's the video number seven, there's video number eight, and there's video number nine. So how would we set these up as a chain of dependent tasks? Let's do that. Let's open the second one. The second one is going to be following the first. This task database already has this dependent task system set up, but let's say it didn't. So I'm gonna add a property. This is how you would set it up in the first place. And it just automatically labels it as property at the outset, we'll change that. So you go down, you open the property type, you scroll down and what you want is a relation. And then you select a database. Now here's where it gets interesting. You can set up a relational database link to the same database you're in and that's what we're doing here. But there's an there's additional trick which I'll get to in a moment. But most people don't realize not only can you set up a relational database link to another database, but you can set up a relational database link to the same database you're in. So both the tasks, the one that's following and the one that's leading, are in the same database. So you want to select the same database that you have all your tasks in, your task database, or in my case, the action items database. Now, when you do this, you get a different option than when you set up a link for a separate database. And the option is, do you wanna create a new property or do you wanna use the same property? And th they label it as sync both ways or no syncing. Now the difference is one will set up two fields and one will set up just one field. If you set up just one field, it's just like linking to another database. You will choose a task elsewhere in the same task database and link to it and the two will have that one field and each will link to the other. But that's not what we want, though that could be useful in other circumstances. So I want you to be aware of that. What we want is to create a new property, which is an additional field, and sync both ways. And what'll happen is one of them is the following 
field or property, and the other is the next in line field or property. Now, these terms following and next in line are the terms that I've chosen because I think it makes it more clear, both for myself and for teaching. But they talk about it, they label them as epic and subtasks. So subtasks make sense. So subtasks are the next in line to, to link those two terms. Epic, I don't know where they come up with that term. I think that doesn't help at all. So what they call epic, I call following. So I'm following this other task. You might call it master, the master task and the dependent task, whatever works for you. But either way, select the create a new property so that you'll have two properties or two fields. The term property and field in this case are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. Notion uses the term property. I use the term field. Field is a database term. So select create a new property right there and create relation. Now, this is duplicative because I already have these two fields, but let's pretend I didn't have those two fields. Now we have property, which is the first one you added, and then it, added, adds, it adds a second one, which it automatically labels relation to action items property, which is not helpful. So we're going to rename these. So I'm going to call property the first one, following, and I'm going to name the second one, next in line. Now, here's where it gets cool. So now you've got it set up. You just don't know it yet. So you choose the one you want to follow. So we are in, let's make sure we know where we are. We're in Notion video number eight. Uh, recording is the action here. So we click following. We want to follow number seven. So we'll scroll down. If you don't see it, just start typing the task. Notion video number seven. So we're following that one. So I just clicked that. And now this task, Notion video number eight, is following Notion video number seven, right? Now here's the cool part. Close that and open Notion video number seven, scroll down to what we just created, it's already entered the next in line for video seven that we just moved over to is video number eight. So it automatically enters the reverse in the other field. When we were in video number eight, we entered following this field, video number seven. Now that we've opened video number seven, it automatically shows us, following is empty because video number seven is not following anything, but next in line, has automatically entered video number eight. So the reverse has already been entered. Great. So now video number eight's here. Now we have a, we've set up the dependency so we can remove the due date for video number eight, hit clear. Now it's not showing this view anymore. Now we just have seven and nine. Now nine should follow eight. So we open number nine, scroll down, and we choose following. You could either scroll through looking for it or just start typing the name of it. Notion, we wanna follow video number eight since this is video number nine and there's video number eight hit the plus sign so now we're in video number nine we just said it's following video number eight now you can click through here straight into video number eight scroll down to the same fields now video number eight just added that video number nine is next in line and previously we added that it's following video number seven so this is the one in the middle video number eight we have first added that it's following video number seven, and then just added next in line with video number nine. The sequence is complete. So now video number nine, we can remove the due date by hitting clear in the date field. Now, if we go back to the dependent task view, now remember, I previously had this set up with two other fields. So this is viewing on the two original fields, not the two we just added. So we're gonna change the filter to it's a little confusing because we use the same name. So there's the original following and the original next in line. Now the original one I had is following with three dots so we can tell the difference. The new one we created is just following with no dots. So we're gonna change the filter from following with three dots to just following, which is the one we just created. Change it to is not empty. So following is not empty will give us the view of all the dependent tasks. Just to be clear, I've changed the filter from my original following filter which had my existing system that I use to the new one we just added for the sake of this particular demonstration. So I also just switched these two columns, the following and the next in line to the new fields and properties I just added for the sake of this demo. So now we see the previous view, but applied only to the new following and next in line fields. So the two we just created, Notion video number nine and Notion video number eight. Now it lists them backwards. I don't like that because I want to be able to look at this and see the next in line should be the next row and the next in line should be the next row. So it's organized. So all you got to do here is just manually sort them. Whenever you create them, 
just make sure you sort them in the view that you're going to look at your dependent tasks in. They're not always sorted properly. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But all you have to do is drag the six dots and put it in the sequence like that. And then they're there. So we've got video number eight, which is following video number seven. Video seven is not listed because it's not following anything. It has an assigned due date. But video number eight is following that. Then next in line is video number nine, which is the next row. Video number nine has number eight listed under the following column. There's nothing next in line, so that's the end of the chain. And that is how you do it. So there you go. That is how I create dependent tasks in my Notion Action Items database. And it is a huge, huge feature that you don't find in any to-do apps that I've ever seen. And it's very clean. It's very obvious. You can organize in the dashboard that we'll talk about in a day or two how this is all viewed and how you can immediately see what's linked to what, what follows what, what the sequence is. And then if you have to reschedule something, you're just rescheduling the first in the chain. Everything else just stays in line. This Notion Action Item Database isn't particularly fancy in how it works. It's not like a showpiece. It's elegant in how it interacts with the system. And you'll really see that as we start looking at the whole dashboard for my action zone and daily activities and how we start rolling up the pyramid, up the pillars, the pipelines pyramid to see how everything interconnects and how you get a view and an understanding and, and sort of an internal comprehension of everything up the chain, both the minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day tasks and the week by week, month by month projects and the quarter by quarter, year by year, pillars and values and priorities in your life. And that's what makes this so powerful. So I can't wait to get further along in this evolution of unfolding how this life operating system works. The next video after this one is going to be on daily tracking, which is the other component of daily activity. So how to track what matters most to you, how to define the metrics that are going to get you from where you are now to where you want to go. So that's next. And then we'll look at the action zone dashboard where you put the daily tracking and the action items database all together in terms of how you execute your minutes and your hours and your days. And we'll build from there and then we'll work up the pipeline. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave your thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work very hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.